morning guys it's early i've been butt butting around this small little lake in my brand new sports pal my little 12 foot square back absolutely loving it it's super stable my three and a half horse merc is taking it beautifully it's really really nice and uh, i'm putting around this little brook trout lake that i've fished before really enjoy fishing it having a bit of a tough time so far water's warm but i knew that coming in but i just had my first really good bite and i'm coming into an area of the lake i really like so uh hopefully i should have some more great footage for you coming up made the switch to the classic dropper rig the one everyone knows when it comes to lake trolling for brook trout i got about half of a a big size crawler threaded onto there and bait is not something that i'll really use much in the in the spring per se you know when people think of prime time brook trout fishing I, I usually don't bother with worms you can use hardware spoons and spinners and you'll generally single out the larger fish when you do that too but i find when you get into summertime and the lakes really come to life with insects they kind of change their feeding habits and smaller presentations even for larger fish i find like live bait slowing it down is really the way to go there's a, a bit of a creek channel here in behind me there's a bit of weed growth that comes up in there and the water's it's it's warm but it's not too warm they, they could still easily be up in those weeds so the sun's up a little bit now this lake's pretty stained so uh, i i think this happened last time i was here too i showed up super early and there just wasn't anything happening and as soon as the sun got up a bit things started to come to life and it's just a visibility thing they could just see a little bit better right so uh stay tuned hopefully things are coming up so i just got set up that dropper rig, we were just talking about it. Rolled up on the first point, and I'm on. This guy's not gonna be big. And there are a lot of small fish in this lake. <sighs> He's scrappy though. And it is first fish of the day, so I can't complain. I knocked the camera down in the process, but uh, we got him. Hey, it's a start. Also, I need to take a second to talk about how friggin' awesome this boat is. I just got it. Damn near brand new. I got my three and a half on here. It's a 12 foot sports pot with the wide transom. I've never been in like the, the wide transom set up like this. It's everything I was hoping it would be in more. Way more stable than any sports pot I've ever been in. It's incredibly light. It's only a 12 foot, but like two people can fish in here so comfortably. And I, I'm just absolutely in love with it. I can't wait to fish in it all the time now. Like I was kind of saying, I think I just got another nice hit. There's fish all over the spot, but I, I think it was just a matter of the sun coming up. I think that's really helping me out right now. I could probably pass all of that stuff that I trolled this morning before the sun was over the trees, and uh, they'd probably be starting to roll kind of kind of over the place right now. Of course, forgot my sunglasses at home, and it's like bluebird day. I might have to. I might have a pair in the truck. I really hope so. I'm so useless with those sunglasses. There's still fish all over this point. Should be able to get into some. Yeah, there we go. Right where he was supposed to be. smaller fish he was just hooked lightly again and look at the colors on that fish that is gorgeous away he goes so we're starting to put together a little bit of a pattern here dropper rigs really doing it and I'm gonna start moving around the lake now again and I think all those spots that I was you know liking the looks of this morning but weren't happening I think things should probably be happening all around the lake now hopefully <laughs> Oh, he is coughing up minnows like crazy, this guy. I thought they were all eating tadpoles, but that guy just coughed up like three minnows. 
Tail walk. I thought he was going to be smaller than that. This guy's not too bad, actually. I'll hold this one up for you guys. Gorgeous. There he goes, nice and healthy. So one thing with the uh, this dropper rig, it's like super popular rig, obviously. You can go on YouTube and find a million videos of people using these things successfully for brook trout. Everyone kind of knows about it. But one thing I've noticed, I haven't used them for very long. I've kind of been always stuck with other things, but I, I only really got into using these the last like two years. And I would always be afraid to go up to like, you know, big attractor spoons. I would always stick with attractors that were quite a bit smaller. And you know, as I get bigger, I find they get more and more effective as you get into the real big, fat, wide, wobbling spoons. It just seems to attract them more. I mean, that's the draw, they're the attractor spoon, but uh, I was a little bit nervous about going up to the big ones. I figured eventually you'd get to a point where you'd start to spook them away, but uh, I haven't found that yet. I haven't found uh, there to be an upper level yet to where you're you're actually spooking them instead of attracting them. I think that they're just a naturally curious fish and you can use a real big fat wobbling spoon and as long as your worm is, you know, that's what, 30 inches? As long as you have a reasonable distance away from that spoon, you're not gonna spook them at all. This one here won't be too big. A little smaller one, 10 incher. Hoping to get into a couple of those two, three pound fish that I know are in here. This isn't a giant trout kind of lake per se, but there are some very nice ones in here. So many of these fish on this size. They're kind of hard to get away from. So this fish, kind of inevitable eventually I'd get a deep hooked fish and he's the first one. So I'm going to keep this guy. He'll be a nice fish to pan fry. He's coming out of fairly warm water so I like to get the, the gills snipped. Try to get some blood out of that fish. If you're going to keep them the least you can do is Try to take care of the meat. You're getting the best bang for your buck, so to speak, when you're harvesting these little trout. Another big thing about summer trout fishing from the water is 72 degrees. Don't be dragging them around on stringers for hours. <coughs> the meat on the on the, those trout are just going to get gross, and you know by the time you get home, you're not even going to want to eat them because they're just nasty. I've made that mistake, unfortunately, and uh, I'll never make it again. When the water gets, you know. Even mid 60s, I'll start bringing a cooler, put your fish in a bag, get it on ice, or at least in a, a cool place. Don't be dragging it around in 70 degree water because uh, you're not going to want to eat those things when you get them back on. Changing up my tactics a little bit. These small fish have been really fun, and I could probably keep doing the uh, the dropper rig and the worm thing and, and getting into lots of those uh, that size class. But uh, I know there's a, a decent number of larger fish in this lake, and I want to you know run something that's going to target those fish a little bit more. So I ran. It's just a small gang troll made by a little company called Shane's Blackwater a Company out east, and they make like nice brook trout specific gear. These gang trolls run really well, pull in a lot of fish, and I'm running just a small quarter ounce little Clio behind it, gold orange. It's a very effective color, especially in stained water like this. And uh, I like to get into, you know, some of those nice 16, 17 inch glass fish that I know are in here. So we'll give that a shot. Nice little creek outlet here. I'm gonna go check it out. It looks like a nice pool down at the bottom.
Oh. First cast hooked into this beautiful 12 inch male sitting right in this little pocket right here. Man, I wish I could have got the net under that one. That is such a bummer. Hooked two beautiful fish in the first two casts out of this pool. And they must have been the only two, the only two feeding ones in here, and after that it's nothing. Usually you don't get too many chances in a pool like this, so I'm gonna get out of here before the bugs chew me alive. feel my spoon kind of ticking through the weeds when he hit right where I was hoping he'd be it's one of the better fish of the day too real pretty male brookie this one he's got colors like that one I lost in the creek Gorgeous little wild brookie. Got some gorgeous colors on him for a lake fish. So I'm gonna get this one dispatched and uh, maybe we'll be able to pluck a few more out of this little weed edge. I'm gonna find the edge of these weeds here. We're in nine feet. I can see them visually. Stay on the outside and just try to work the dropper rig real close to it. I don't think Rookies are the kind of fish that will really sit right in the thick stuff, but they'll definitely use it if there's a good food source there, which there's piles of minnows in those weeds right now, so they'll just kind of dip in and out as needed. This is kind of a perfect way to target the fish that are doing that. this weed bite here. Really liking this weed edge bite here. Wow, another really pretty one. Maybe a little bit bigger than that last one too. He's really fighting. Oh yeah. That's a great fish. Absolutely gorgeous too. Look at that gorgeous specimen. On the weed edge. How cool is that? That's another 13, 14 inch fish. It's a decent one for this lake. So that's gonna be third one for the box. That'll make a nice uh, nice meal for me. I just heard another fish jump. Try to figure out where it is. There's a pile of fish in this bay, obviously, which is really exciting. This is gonna be my last one to keep. So I'll just fun fish from here on in, hopefully get a couple more. That is awesome. So you get a visual on these weeds here that I'm fishing, so I'm just kind of staying along the edge of that. It's a really well-defined edge. It's very helpful for trolling it. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Man, this weed bed is full of fish. So that's three passes in a row through here. There he is. Goodbye. That was easy. It is just crazy how many fish are in this weed edge. That's, that's four passes in a row and I haven't even made it like halfway through the weed edge each time before something hit. But. Uh, the average size is definitely dropping. We're getting into the small ones. There, I just lost him. I find that's often how it goes. You'll pick off the biggest, most aggressive fish in a spot first. 
and as you stick around the average size will often get smaller and smaller but uh on that note i think it's about 10 30 i'm getting out of here i was like on the water fishing at six i think this morning that's early so i've been well over four hours on the water i'm exhausted there's supposed to be a lot of rain coming in so i may as well leave now i don't mind a bit of rain but not if i don't have to it was an awesome little day got lots of fish got enough for dinner hopefully you guys learned a little bit about summer brook trout fishing it's really not as intimidating as as some people seem to think it is it's really not uh the fish are predictable they'll feed all summer you just have to adjust your tactics i think the two big takeaways you have to slow down your presentation and you got to downsize i think that's really important and they're not as deep as you might think they'd be there's so many times where i've gone out in the summer you know warm warm water the water is 72 almost 73 degrees and i'm catching them in a weedy back bay that has no more than 12 13 feet of water i mean these fish are not super deep water but what they are is closer to the bottom and they're not as active they're not doing as much but they're still very very catchable if you present your bait the right way they're not going to be sitting in bottom in the middle of the lake in 30 feet of water necessarily and that's kind of what people seem to think they just think they get impossible to catch in the summer but it's it's not the case at all go out and give it a shot I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, I don't use too much live bait in the in the spring. This time of year I do. I like using worms. And it's also important to think about if you're catching uh, and releasing a lot of fish in water up in the 70s, um, anything that's hooked deep or maybe stressed out, bouncing around in the boat, I mean, their, their odds of surviving get pretty low. So if you want to release the fish and the water's warm, don't even touch it. Just... Get the hooks out of it and get it back as quick as you can to reduce the stress because uh, the mortality rate will increase. I mean, that's that's just part of it. So uh, it's something to think about. Anyways, I'm out. Thanks for watching.